Hey y'all, what's going on? It's Athena Amoeba, your friend in exploring the power of your mind. The power that you can use to create your own universe. Today's video is an update video for week 10. And this coming week is going to be week 11. So this week 10 video is actually a review of week 10. Week 10, oh my gosh, I am so excited, thrilled, exhilarated, like beyond belief because I've actually made progress on my weight loss goal. And of course I'm wearing a big sweater today so you can't tell, but I've lost five pounds in two weeks. And that actually is in alignment with my goal because I've been wanting to lose at least two pounds a week to have steady and consistent progress. So as I've mentioned before, about two weeks ago, I finally joined Diet Bet and Healthy Wage and uh, my weigh-in weight for Healthy Wage was 192 and my weigh-in weight for Diet Bet was 191. So I am now 186, which means I have lost either five or six pounds depending on which starting weight you're talking about. But I am just so exhilarated because this means I've lost at least two pounds a week, if not a uh, 2.5 or 3 pounds, again, depending on which weight you're looking at, but I feel so amazing. Another reason for that is that I finally got past my wall. Um, I feel like I've heard a lot of people talk about how you can hit a wall in weight loss, and for me, that wall was 190. <laughs> I was 220, that was my like highest, highest weight, my heaviest weight, and I lost weight, I'm super proud of that. Um, I lost 30 pounds, got down to 190, but ever since February, have not made progress past that number. So finally, finally, last week, I saw the scale get below 190, and it was just such an extraordinary feeling. Like, it just felt so amazing to see myself make progress on a goal when I haven't really seen myself make progress on too many goals. It felt almost surreal to see myself making this progress finally after so long. And to have that confidence in myself to know that, hey, you can set a goal and you can achieve it. You just have to want it bad enough. You just have to follow through with it. And that's exactly what happened for the past two weeks. I lost five pounds. I got past my wall of 190 and I'm now 186. And I have not seen that number in years, y'all years. The other thing I want to note is that three months ago on May 22nd, I posted my first video on this channel. So it's kind of like a little mini anniversary for me. And it's really amazing to be able to go back and watch videos from three months ago and see how much progress I really have made. I know that this is not a journey that has an end. Like this is a life journey, you know what I mean? But I feel in a lot of ways that I'm at the beginning of it. I'm at the beginning of creating intentional lasting change in my life and it feels extraordinary. So it was something that was just really amazing to me to see. I just went back and watched videos from uh, weeks one through week four. And I was like, wow, that was like three months ago now and look how far I've come. And, you know, when it comes to the weight loss goal specifically, I made no progress on that for like two months. <laughs> for like over two months, I made zero progress, but I talked about it in every video. And every video was like, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to try. And, you know, I meant it, but I didn't see any progress in that area until two weeks ago. And I think the reason why is because it became too painful. Tony Robbins talks about this in his book, Awaken the Giant Within, that all of our motivation is rooted in pleasure and pain, which are very basic, animalistic type of drivers, right? They're very animalistic type of influences, but we are animals and so they are deeply embedded in us. So we will do something to gain pleasure or we will do something to escape pain. And um, for me, I think what's changed, because again, I hadn't made progress for two months and then all of a sudden two weeks ago, boom, I'm like, I lost five pounds, you know, and I'm on the track to uh, keep losing about two pounds a week. And what's the difference between two weeks ago and 
two months ago, you know? And I really do think that the big difference is that it just became too painful for me. It became too painful for me to not pursue these goals, to not make these changes and to not lose the weight. So like three weeks ago, three weekends ago, I uh, had a really lazy weekend. I didn't accomplish anything. I started to get really down on myself. I wasn't feeling good about myself. At this point, I still hadn't lost any weight, right? And I just decided, and it wasn't just about that, but it was about other things. It was about the fact that I didn't do anything that weekend and that, you know, I was in a really depressed kind of mood and was in a really lazy kind of mood and was probably impacting my boyfriend who like I live with. And, um, you know, I didn't want to project that energy onto him. So at the end of that super lazy Saturday, I decided I don't want to have more days like this. Like, I don't want this to be a reoccurring theme in my life. So what do I have to do to make sure that it's not? So I was like, what are my goals for the year? Let me take a look at that. Let me see what I'm missing. What should I be focusing on on days when I'm just like, you know, letting my mind get absorbed with all of this bullshit that is holding me back and making me feel, you know, drained of all my energy. So I took a look at my yearly goals and I evaluated all of them and I'm going to make a video about that because it's not only important to set goals, but it's important to reevaluate them, to review them. So I was taking a look at my goals, but I was reevaluating them. Like, are these still my goals? And if so, how serious am I about them and what do I have to do to make them happen? So of course, the one on the top of my list was still weight loss to lose uh, 60 pounds by the end of this year. And I said, holy shit, like it's... August like it was the beginning of August and that means I only had four months left to accomplish this goal of losing 60 pounds So when I looked at my goals and reevaluated them I was like it, it'll be too painful to get to the end of the year and not have made that progress It'll be too painful to get to the end of the year and basically be in the same spot that I was at the beginning of this year Like I have to see myself grow and evolve otherwise What am I doing with my life really? You know if I have to work on making myself the person I want to be so I can do the things I want to do and live the life I want to live. And I feel like if, you know, making progress in who I am as a person physically, mentally, emotionally, all of those things is kind of like my foundation for the rest of my life, then I've got to get on track with these goals, right? So it just became too painful for me to not follow through and to not accomplish this goal. Like the thought of not accomplishing it was just too painful and that's why I was like, all right, what am I going to do to make this serious? That's when I decided and then a couple days later is when I joined Diet Bet and I've started to lose weight since then. And again, it really is because it just became too painful to think about not accomplishing it. And that is in Tony Robbins' book, Awaken the Giant Within. I'm going to review that chapter because it's relevant to what I'm going through. And the other thing I'll say about that is I've heard other people talk about this, right? Like I've heard other people who have made changes in their life, who have made transformations in their life, talk about how it just became too painful not to anymore, right? And that's why they had to do it. And I was honestly scared because I knew before two weeks ago, I knew I wasn't at that point. Like I knew I wanted to lose weight. I knew I had made some progress on that goal, but it wasn't painful enough. It was painful. Don't get me wrong. It was painful, especially because I was insecure and like feeling the pain of that every day, but it wasn't painful enough to like make me do it every single day. And so I was scared that I was never going to get to that point. I was scared it was never going to become painful enough for me to follow through consistently. But you know what it did? <laughs> it finally just did. And I think that's a combination of, you know, having these goals and evaluating them. And that's why I'll make a video on that because I think it's important. But, you know, I don't know if you can plan that. I don't know if you can force it to become too painful for you. So if you're like not at that point and you're like, how do I get to that point? You know, I'm not 100% sure other than, like I said, evaluating your goals and thinking about that. I think part of it, though, is getting yourself out of a state of learned helplessness and realizing that you do have the power to take your life from where it is to where you want it to be. Because without that piece, you know, it can be painful, but you don't see what power and what role you have in changing it 
because when you're like, this is too painful, I've got to make the change now, you know, because you see you have that power. But if you don't see you have that power, you're in a state of learned helplessness where everything's painful and you just feel hopeless and trapped. And that is no place to be that it's a really shitty place to be. I've definitely been there for a long time, but you can definitely break out of that state and it comes from evaluating where do you have power in your life and focusing on that. So yeah, I think that has made some of the biggest differences and why I've been able to make progress and why I will continue to make progress. The other thing I wanted to share is it's not perfect, right? Like it's literally only been two weeks and I've managed to lose five pounds, which is amazing. But it's not like the scale goes down and down and down and never comes back up again. Like. Throughout the last two weeks, the scale has come back up, even to 190. Even this past week, um, this past week I hit 186, which is the lowest that I've gotten to so far. But literally, like, the morning before the scale read 186, it read 189. Like, I went back up to 189 when I had already gotten down to 187. It went back up to 189, and, you know, I didn't freak out about it. I just thought, you know, my weight always fluctuates. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep making the best choices you can make um, in any given moment and you will see, you will eventually see it reflected back. And I did. Next day, at the end of the day, 186. But you know, that has to do with a lot of things. I mean, there's water retention, which can make you hold on to weight but then lose it really quickly because it's just water retention. There's uh, the fact that I was on my period last week, so that has something to do with that. Um, muscle weighs more than fat, so if you're working out and gaining muscle, you could potentially gain weight, but m muscle also burns fat faster, so it will, you know, help you uh, lose weight faster even if the scale goes back up again. So there's like all these factors, right? So we can't be, if we're on a weight loss journey, we can't be too tied to the number on the scale. But the reason why I check it so often is because I am trying to win this bet. So just checking it regularly just keeps me on track. Like the fact that I saw the scale go back up again made me be like, okay, I have to make sure <laughs> that I'm not cheating on my meals, that I'm not, you know, uh, going over on my calories, I have to make sure that I'm getting walks in, and it just keeps me me on track personally. But I also know that when I see it go back up, one, it's just a natural thing, but two, I claim the victory, right? Like, after a big binge or something, because I did have a cheat day this past weekend, oh my god, and after a big binge, the scale used to say like 194, and now it's saying 189. So to me, I'm just claiming that victory. It's like, the, the spectrum has shifted down and I'm claiming that victory and I just <clears throat> want to keep continuing to do what I'm doing so that it continues to shift down, right? Like I'm not looking to be like, oh my god, it was 186 and now I'm 189, that means that I'm slipping. It's like, no, no, it's, it's not perfect, right? Like that's probably unrealistic to hold yourself to like one number and to like think that that number is not going to fluctuate even throughout a day. So the thing is just knowing when to claim the victory, knowing I've made progress, and seeing that what I've been doing is working, so I just need to do more of that. That being said, what am I gonna do this coming week to ensure that I win this challenge, to ensure that I continue making progress on this goal, that I keep feeling good about myself, and uh, just to have a great week overall? Well, I'm going to start walking five miles every day and then going for hikes on the weekend. I did my first hike this past weekend and it was super fun and I also thought I was going to die. <laughs> and it wasn't even very long at all. So I'm excited about that. These are just little things to do. It's like, what am I gonna do for fun on the weekend? Go for a hike. That also helps me with my goals. And as far as walking goes, I've been walking without, you know, putting like a max time that I want to walk or like a maximum distance. But I think five miles is a is a good goal because when I go to the park and do my usual route, it's 2.5 miles. Um, but I know that if I double that, it will absolutely have an impact, a greater impact. So that's my plan. We'll see how well I stick to it. But that's the plan. Five miles a day and hiking on weekends. Of course, also just keeping up with counting my calories. That's honestly been the biggest thing. I use my fitness pal to track my calories and even on days when I'm not perfect, it keeps me close to the goal, which has obviously been working. 
Another thing I'm gonna do is remember what's been working for me and continuing to incorporate that into my life. I went back and watched some of my older videos, like I said, and it reminded me that like, oh my gosh, I am letting resistance kick my ass in reference to the War of Art video. And this past week, I definitely let resistance kick my ass in the form of my period. I let my period be my excuse. And re-watching that old video, I was like, fuck, I totally let my period be my excuse to eat a little bit more and to be, you know, not as motivated about walking. So now that my period is over, I will not use that as an excuse anymore, but I did have to remember, oh yeah, resistance manifests in real ass ways. So don't let your period be your excuse. So, as far as content goes, the videos that you can expect from me in the near future are finally the power triangle. And I've been talking about this for so long. The power triangle is uh, the triangle of victimization or like having a victim mindset versus the power triangle of having a mindset of being the creator of your own life. How these two things are different and how we can use them every day. This is a huge subject. It definitely plays a huge role in my transformation. I've been struggling to make this video just because it's so dense and there's a lot of content and I think the more time goes on, the more I think about, you know, how I could flush out that content and maybe even break it up into three videos instead of just one. But that is coming, finally, because I think it's really important, great content. So the power triangle. I'm also going to make a video about, again, reevaluating your goals, how to do that, and the importance of that. I'm gonna make another short video about Ty Lopez <laughs> because uh, I really kind of, I went back and watched that video about what I said and I kind of regret what I said about him and not because it's not true, I actually stand by most of what I said, but I regret saying that you shouldn't do his program or making it sound like, you know, I was scammed into doing his program. I think that came from feeling insecure about looking stupid. And to be honest, that's a big insecurity that I have. Um, and I don't know why, you know, everybody's stupid sometimes. <laughs> so I don't know, I have this insecurity about coming off as dumb and naive, and I think it's because I really can be a lot of times. And so I don't wanna be this person who gets taken advantage of and who, you know, whatever, whatever. But you know, that's really not what it was for me. Being able to stand in my own truth is a big deal for me. So I'm gonna make that video. <laughs> And finally, oh my gosh, I'm going to make a video highlighting Lisa Nichols because some of her interviews this week have just fucking blown my mind and have kept me on track. And I'm going to dig deep into that because she is amazing. And so I can't wait to make those videos and I'm going to actually link the links. <laughs> I'm actually going to put the links to those videos in the comments for this video because, oh, I want to share it so bad. So that is my week that's what's coming up that has been what has been going on i've been making progress so i i like i i feel besides myself with joy <laughs> like i almost can't believe it's real like i was stuck so long in the position of not making any progress and just feeling bad about myself that now that i'm actually seeing myself make progress it just feels surreal and incredible and i'm just happy to be here where i am and I know it's taken time and work. And so to those of you all out there who have dreams, who are struggling to follow through, just know that it's not forever. It will eventually get too painful for you <laughs> or you'll find the motivation somewhere. Just keep focusing, keep setting goals for yourself and keep dreaming, right? Um, and take risks, take, take action, you know? So much, <laughs> so much we can do, but I believe in you. You know, if you if you have a dream, I believe in you and you can learn to believe in yourself to make it happen. So that's all I got for today. Until next time, so much love to you all. We are making it happen.